Numerical Computation, Chapter 6, Additional Video, Number 3. This video can be viewed after you have finished all the regular videos in Chapter 6, as well as the first and second additional videos. We now look at overdetermined systems. Given a linear system, Ax equal b, where the A matrix might not be a square matrix. Consider A is a M times N matrix. Then here the unknown vector is a vector of length N and the total number of equations, the right hand side vector, is of length M. The system is called overdetermined if M is bigger than N, that is the number of equations is more than the number of unknown. And it is called underdetermined if m is less than n. We see that if m is less than n, then there can be infinitely many solutions to the system. We consider the case of an overdetermined system, that is, the number of equations are larger than the number of unknown. In general, there might be no solutions for such a system. Nevertheless, one can search for a solution or a vector x star such that it might not be a solution, but for some forms of arrow that we that we defined, the arrow is minimized. We now give an example of a commonly used measurement for the arrow. Let's consider the Euclidean norm of the residual vector. The residual vector r at x star equals a times x star minus b. This measures how much the equation is not satisfied by the x star. Note that if r shall be 0, then x star would be a solution. And then we now have the formulation. We seek a vector x star such that the residual measured at x star, we take the square because it's a bit easier, otherwise you have a square root. That means ax star minus b measured in the Euclidean norm square shall be less than ay minus b measured in the same norm, that is the residual measured at y square, and this should hold for every y in our n. So this means x star is a minimizer. It minimizes the function, the Euclidean norm square of the residual. Such a minimizer, if exists, is called the least square solution of the overdetermined system. We now derive the necessary condition for the minimizer. Let's define the arrow. E as a function of x will be just the square of the residual, which is the transpose of the residual vector times itself. Then we can do some computation to see what is this arrow. So the residual is defined as ax minus b. So we plug that in, ax minus b transpose times ax minus b. And then we can apply the transpose option inside, since it's a linear one for um, addition and subtractions. And then the transpose of the first one, ax, we use the rule of the transpose, this will be x transpose times a transpose. And we now distribute 
the product. We open this up. So we get this one times that one gives me the first term. And then this one times b is here. And then this one times ax is here. And finally, the term bt times b is here. Now we use the fact that xt at times b equals bt ax. Why is that true? Well, you observe that xt atb, in the end, this gives you a number, and so does this expression. Let's say we take this number, we perform a transpose operator on it. You transpose a single number, you don't change it, and the transpose of that would exactly equal this expression. Okay, so that means the two terms in the middle can be combined into one term with the two in the front. We now compute the gradient vector of the error function. The gradient is taken with respect to the x, and x is a vector. And we no denote it by upside down triangle. This is uh, the gradient notation of E. And you perform the derivative on this expression, we get the first term you have xt times x. It's a quadratic term that gives you 2 times x. And then here, you, you take a gradient in x, you just get the coefficient. And the last term is constant, which contributes a 0. So um, at the minimum x star, we must have a 0 for the gradient vector. Otherwise, it's not a minimum. So the minimizer x star must satisfy the following so-called necessary condition. That is, this has to be 0, which means ATA x star equals ATB. Note that A is not a square matrix. But then AT times A becomes a square matrix with the same size as X. It's A. A N times N matrix. And then AT times B is a matrix times a vector. This in the end gives a vector of length N. So we end up with uh, a system of equations, actually a linear system of equation. These equations are called the normal equations. Now we can write b to be at times a, the coefficient matrix, and y denote the right-hand side at times b, and we have the system b x star equals y to solve. Note that the matrix B here now is symmetric. If in addition we have that A is full rank, this means the n row vectors are linearly independent, then the B matrix formed will be non-singular and positive definite. Thus, a Cholesky factorization can be applied to B, and one can further solve the normal equation utilizing that factorization. Unfortunately, as it turns out, that the computation of the Cholesky factorization of B is very sensitive to Randolph error, and one often gets a not accurate solution. Fortunately, there are other methods that works better. Here, we will go through two of them. One is called the QR factorization, which we will cover in this video. And another one is called singular value decomposition, known as SVD. That one will be covered in the next video.
Now let's look at QR factorization. Let A be a matrix, a rectangular matrix, M times N, where M is bigger than N, and we assume its full rank. Then it admits a unique QR factorization of the following form. We can write A as the product of two matrices, Q times R. Here, the Q is a square matrix, M times N, and is also orthogonal. That means Q transpose times Q is the identity matrix. And the R matrix here is a rectangle matrix, M times N, the same size as A. This matrix is upper triangular, such that the entrance below the main diagonal are all zero, and all the diagonal elements are non-zero. Since the Q matrix is orthogonal, this method is also known as the orthogonal triangular decomposition. So Q is an orthogonal matrix. That means the column vectors of Q, they form an orthogonal set of vectors. And these vectors can be generated by the standard Grant-Smith process. We have came across this process earlier in the study of polynomials and orthogonal polynomials. We now form some sub-matrices. So we denote Q tilde, which is a matrix of size M times N, to be the rectangular matrix formed by the first N columns of Q. Note that Q is a square matrix of M times M. And then we form an R tilde, also a square matrix, M times N. And that is the, the upper triangular matrix formed by the first n rows of R. So we know um, after the first n rows of R, the, the rest is all zero. So we just take that part, the square matrix. And the reason for that is that to reconstruct the A matrix, those two submatrix are enough. You can easily verify that Q tilde times R tilde will give you the A matrix. And then we can solve the X star by the following expression. It will be the R tilde, now it's a square matrix, and we take the inverse of it times Q tilde transpose times B. The QR factorization is available as a function in MATLAB, and the function name is just QR, lowercase, and you send in a matrix A, and it returns a matrix Q and R, which is the QR factorization. And there are various options, and you are encouraged to explore and uh, and get yourself familiar with them. Okay, that's all for QR factorization. In the next video, we will talk about singular value decomposition. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.